uh, welcome back. Uh, today we will start a <coughs> new topic. So, in this chapter we study 2 point boundary value problems. So, for short we will denote it by BVP. So, in many important <coughs> applications uh, concerning differential equations, the data on the <coughs> unknown function is given not at just one point, but many points and we now discuss uh, restrict our discussion to two point boundary value problems. So, in contrast with uh, initial value problems which we have already studied. So, the data on the unknown function uh, governing a differential equation are given just at one point that is initial value problem and this is when it is more than one point the data is given at more than one point then it is referred to as uh, two point or more <coughs> more point boundary value problems. So, our discussion is restricted to two point boundary value problems. And uh, let me start with some examples. So, just to see what are the difficulties, what are the issues. Okay. The first example is again u double dot plus u equal to 0 and again recall dot represents d by d t differentiation with respect to t variable that is time variable and u the unknown function. So, if so this is second order equation and for the initial value problem we give data of u and u dot at one single point. Okay. Now, we are <coughs> interested in two point boundary value problems. So, data is given at two points. Okay. So, for example, say u 0 is equal to 0 and u b, b is another point say it is given as beta. Okay. So, we have to find a solution to the differential equation in this interval 0 b, okay, 0 b which satisfy the differential equation u double dot plus u equal to 0 and in addition to that it also satisfies these two boundary conditions at 0 and b. Okay. So, since this is a linear problem we know that the general solution is given by so that we have already learnt. So, u of t is c 1 sin t plus c 2 cos t okay, for this linear equation. This is general solution and if we want this to satisfy these two boundary conditions. So, let us start with at u equal to t equal to 0. So, u 0 equal to 0 implies just you put the value substitute the value <coughs> t equal to 0 in this general solution and require that u 0 equal to 0 then you see that c 2 is 0. Okay. So, <coughs> so then this uh, cost t term is not there. So, we have just therefore, u t is equal to I will just now replace c 1 by just c sin t. So, c is a constant and now we have to determine that constant c if possible in order to satisfy the second boundary condition u b. Okay. So, let us calculate that thing. So, beta is equal to u b this is equal to c sin b. Okay. 
Now, you see already some difficulties here. So, for example, <coughs> so if b is equal to n pi, okay, then sin b is sin n pi and that is 0, n is an integer. In this case, positive integer okay, does not matter. So, therefore, if beta is not 0, there is no solution. Okay, so, you just one observation when b equal to n pi n is a positive integer, then we will not have a solution if beta is not equal to 0. So, that the other uh, the boundary condition at uh, t equal to b is not satisfied in this case. On the other hand, if b is not n pi, then sin b is not 0 and then choosing c is equal to beta by sin b, we have a unique solution. You have a unique solution for the boundary value problem. Okay. So, even in the simplest case of a second order equation with constant coefficients, we may have a solution or we may not have a solution. Okay. So, let us continue with one more example. Okay. So, this is minus u double dot equal to f t. Zero less than t less than one, and now the <coughs> again we have two point zero and one. So instead of u, I'll give the data u double u dot zero is equal to gamma zero minus u dot one. We'll see why I'm putting minus one in a minute gamma. Okay. So, this represents steady state heat conduction, heat flow in a rod. Okay. Physically, that is the, so rod is placed at <coughs> the interval 0 1 these two end points and this is the these represent the heat flux. Okay. So, that is one uh, physical interpretation. Okay. Now, let us try <coughs> and f is the uh, forcing term okay. f is given to us. Okay. And now, let us integrate the differential equation. <coughs> so, we have integral 0 to 1 minus u double dot t d t is equal to 0 to 1 f t d t. This is from the differential equation and the left hand side just we can integrate it and just to find that this is minus u dot one plus u dot 
0 and that is gamma 1 plus gamma. Okay. So, hence we have this equality between the forcing term and the boundary conditions. Okay. So, necessarily the forcing term and the boundary condition should satisfy this. Let, let me write it. So, 0 to 1 f t d t is equal to gamma 1 plus gamma g. Okay. So, now this relation will tell us which boundary conditions and which forcing terms are uh, <coughs> possible and which are not to have a solution to the B V P. Okay. So, for example, if f is identically equal to 1 and gamma 1 equal to gamma 0 is 0. So, more generally gamma 1 plus gamma 0 is 0, then this condition is not satisfied, then B V P has no solution. because this condition is violated okay, and the left side you get 1 and the right hand side you get 0. So, that is violated. So, there are no solutions. So, on the other hand, so if I take I keep the boundary condition same. Now, I take f t is equal to sin 2 pi x. gamma 1 equal to gamma 0 is 0, then certainly <coughs> that relation is satisfied, then the relation call it star is satisfied and we have many solutions. So, write the solution again you can just with take this f t equal to sin 2 pi t and solve the differential equation and you see that you have this minus uh, 1 by 4 pi square sin uh, 2 pi t. Okay. So, you can check that this is satisfy the equation in order so satisfies the boundary conditions. So, there is no problem there and A is arbitrary, A is arbitrary constant. Okay. So, again you see the solution is not unique. In one case there is no solution and in another case we have infinitely many solutions. So, these are the typical problems we face in uh, the study of the bound two point bound value problems. Okay. So, with this let me now uh, <coughs> discuss a general theory first for linear equations. So, how to obtain a solution for a <coughs> linear second order equation satisfying boundary conditions. Okay. So, here so uh, for simplicity, so let me just consider y double dot plus alpha t 
y dot plus beta t y is equal to g of t. So, this is in a less than t less than b okay. and for simplicity let me take the boundary conditions as y a equal to 0 y b equal to 0. Okay. So, this is the <coughs> problem here. So, we have this interval a b. Okay. So, we are to find a solution for this equation satisfying these two boundary conditions. Okay. So, we want a C 2 solution y is a C 2 function it is twice continu continuously differential function <coughs> satisfying this differential equation and these boundary conditions at the a and b. Okay. So, while dealing with linear equation we have <coughs> uh, lots of tools already developed. So, we are going to make use of that. So, uh, the theory for linear equation is somewhat easier. Okay. So, let me <coughs> start with this. So, let me put some numbers. So, this is equation 1, this is equation 2. So, this alpha beta g are continuous functions. So, some minimum hypothesis defined on this closed interval a b. Okay. So, what we would like to view this one as. <coughs> so, if alpha beta are fixed. So, fix fixing alpha beta. So, what <coughs> would like to do in analogy with first equation. So, first order equation it was just one integration was involved and similar thing we expect even for the second order equation. So, there is this integration box. So, we will see what that integration is and here the input g and comes out solution u, solution y. Okay. That is what we would like to <coughs> use this uh <coughs> boundary value problem 1 and 2. Okay. So, we will simplify a little bit, we will rewrite uh <coughs> rewrite 1. Okay. So, this is for some simplification, rewrite 1 as okay, this. Uh, d by d t of some p t y dot plus q t y is equal to m f t. Okay. So, there is some advantage in this thing. So, let us exploit that thing. So, this is I call it 3. Okay. So, what is p? p is a positive function and p is also c 1 on a b. So, it is quite <coughs> continuously differential function which is positive okay. that is <coughs> that is important. Okay. So, uh, very easy to see that 1 implies 3 Okay, so, first okay, 3 implies 1 okay, that is that is the easier part. Okay. So, 3 implies 1. So, if you expand this by this differentiating this product you see that uh, alpha is p dot by p and beta is q t by p and g is f by okay and for the converse you have to just find what p is and p comes from this so put pt 
is equal to exponential a to t alpha s uh, d s. And since this is an exponential, so p is always positive and it is differentiable because alpha is continuous and we are integrating it. So, that will produce a C 1 function. Okay. So, you can verify and with this p you can uh, calculate what q is and what f is. Okay. So, now we restrict this our attention to this 3 and again recall the boundary conditions y a they are not changed y a equal to 0. So, this is Okay, remember that. Okay. Okay. So let so a procedure. <coughs> so let u one, u two be two linearly independent solutions of homogeneous equation. So, that is in 3 you take f 0 and then you <coughs> and this existence of these two linearly independent solutions come from general theory of linear equations and we are sure that they are there. Okay, they, they exist. Okay. Then by using variation of constants formula a general solution of 3 is given by. So, one part consists of solution of the homogeneous equation and that is a linear combination of u 1 and u 2 and the other one is coming from the particular integral and let me just write that. So, this is uh, a to t f s w s. So, check this one from uh, <coughs> bit complicated, but straightforward. So, u 1 yes, u 2 t minus u 1 t u 2 s d s. Okay. So, this is for, for the homogeneous equation and this is for the inhomogeneous part. So, this is general solution uh, of 3. Okay. Now, we, uh, we want this y to satisfy the boundary conditions y a equal to y b equal to 0 okay. and when t is equal to a this integral is no more there and when that integral is there when t equal to b. So, let us write those two equations. So, therefore, a u 1 a plus b u 2 a equal to 0 and a u 1 b plus b u 2 b is equal to a to b. So, let me not, not write the whole thing. So, you just copy from the previous line. Only thing is I am taking the other side. So, there will be a sign chain. Okay. So, a b are constants. Now, the a and b satisfy these two equations, linear equations. Okay. And we hope to solve them provided this 
determinant uh, is non zero the co the coefficient uh, of this the coefficient matrix the determinant of the coefficient matrix is not zero okay so assuming assuming so here the determinant is just this one u1 u2 b minus u1 b u2 a not 0 we can solve for a b uniquely ok. So, now you write a and b from and now you <coughs> so, uh, and uniquely. So, find a b and substitute in. So, let us go back and see what this one ok. So, let us call this some equation I have put 3 there ok. So, let me put 4 ok. So, after solving <coughs> uh, for a and b from those equations uh, you have solved now a b from these two linear equations in 4 ok. okay. So, I let me just write the uh, end result. So, it is bit involved, but very straightforward. So, let me just write that a b f s ah, I forgot to tell what w s is let me complete that thing ok. Uh, okay. u 1 b u 2 s minus u 1 s u 2 b. You also check that I might have done some mistake, but you can verify yourself. These are just linear equations. So, there is no problem in uh, verification. And this is where that determinant comes u 1 a u 2 b minus u 1 b u 2 a b s and as usual there is other part ok. There is no change there. So, let me just a t Okay, and let me just put the as it is. Okay, so what is W S? Okay, let me just say what W S is. So W S at W T is the Ronskian of u 1 u 2 at t ok. And since both these <coughs> they are linearly independent solutions of the homogeneous equation. So, this is ok by definition u 1 t u 2 dot t and u 1 dot t u 2 t and since they satisfy the same homogeneous equation, 
you can easily check that this is actually given by. So, this we already done uh, earlier for general linear systems. So, it is constant by p t and remember we have assumed p t is bigger than 0. And looking at this expression, let us go back again. Okay, so, this complicated let me call it phi u, okay, this complicated expression. So, the first integral is a to b and second one is only from a to t. So, we can split this integral into two parts. So, y t is something a to t plus t to b. So, remember this because we are going to imitate this. Okay. So, looking at this expressions in the integrand, so it is convenient to <coughs> so looking at the integrand integrands okay, in phi u, it is convenient to introduce the following. Introduce the following functions. So, namely W one T is equal to U one A U two T minus U one T u 1 u 2 a and w 2 t at the other end this is at one end t equal to a and this one is u 1 b u 2 t minus u 1 t u 2 b. And w 1 and w 2 being linear combinations of u 1 and u 2, these are just constants u 1 a, u 2 a, they are just constants here. Okay. So, they are linear combinations of u 1 and u 2. So, therefore, w 1, w 2 are also solutions of the homogeneous equation homogeneous equation 3. So, right hand side is 0. Okay. And moreover, if you look at these expressions, so moreover and this is the advantage we take now, moreover w 1 a is equal to 0 and w 2 b is 0. So, they are the so home solutions of the homogeneous equation and each one of satisfying one boundary condition. So, w 1 satisfy the boundary condition at a and w 2 satisfy the boundary condition at b. Okay. And now, you just forget whatever calculations we did and start afresh from this w 1 w 2. Okay. That is just to get a motivation uh, how to obtain this uh, w 1 w 2. Okay. So, now let us start with so a fresh. So, let w 1 w 2 be two linearly independent solutions of homogeneous equation 3 you have to remember that homogeneous equation 3 satisfying w 1 a equal to 0 and w 2 b equal to 0. Okay. 
So, if you have a more general condition, this is what we have to do. You have to find two linearly independent solutions of the homogeneous equation 3, satisfying uh, one of them satisfies boundary condition at one point and another one at another point. Okay. So, for simplicity you have taken this simple boundary condition here that namely y a equal to y b equal to 0 and w 1 satisfies the boundary condition at one point a and w 2 satisfies the boundary condition at b. Okay. Now, define So, g of T s it has two parts. So, uh, let me draw a picture later. So, this is w 1 s w 2 t if a is less than or equal to s less than or equal to t and other way around w 1 t w 2 s if t is less than s less than or equal to. So, if you take this square a b ok. So, this is the line t equal to s ok in one portion this is uh, s less than or equal to t and here t is less than okay, that is second portion. So, this is the first portion and that is what is happening and define and put y of t is equal to And <coughs> little comment later, just look at the definition of G. So, G has two parts one in A T. So, this integral splits into two parts A to T and T to P, okay. similar to the one we did for T and we expect this y 2 satisfy the differential equation and also the boundary condition and this is the integral box we are talking at the beginning and so see this integral box is just manufactured with the help of these two linearly independent solution okay nothing else okay and that comes from the just uh, homogeneous equation and now we put this input f the right hand side and we obtain corresponding solution Okay. So, this is what uh, we have obtained and now we will verify that y t indeed satisfies the differential equation 3 and also the boundary conditions. Okay. So, this is the in the next 10 minutes we will do that thing. So, so claim under suitable normalization we will see what this normalization is y satisfies d 3 differential equations 3 and boundary conditions. So, it is very easy to verify. So, remember y t is given by. So, let me just write that. So, a t w 1 s w 2 t f s d s plus t 2 b w 1 t w 2 s f s d s. Okay, just remember this okay, every time we have to do that thing and looking at this expression it is very easy to see that. So, <coughs> so clearly 
yaa y a y a z 0 okay <coughs> y a 0 because w 1 a is 0 a is 0 okay, and y b is 0 because w 2 b is 0. Okay, you see the <coughs> uh, way we have chosen the two linearly in independent solutions of the homogeneous equation, they are helping us in uh, satisfying the boundary conditions. Okay? And since we are assuming w 1 w 2 are also linearly independent, <coughs> so since w 1 w 2 are linearly independent, they are Ranskian is this we already seen is constant divided by p t and the normalization. Okay. So, we normalize. So, normalize means you just multiply w 1 w 2 by constants normalize w 1 w 2. So, that the Ranskian is 1 by p t. Okay, so, we want this constant to be 1 and that can always be achieved by multiplication by some constants. Okay. So, there is no problem there. So, this is the normalization we are uh, talking about. Okay. So, now <coughs> we directly verify that y satisfies 3. So, again let me recall what that 3 is the differential equation. So, it is d by d t of p t d y by d t plus q t y is equal to f t. Okay. And uh, <coughs> uh, w 1 w 2 satisfy the homogeneous equation. So, that means, d d t p t w i uh, dot d by d d w i by d t plus q t w i equal to 0. So, i equal to 1 2. Okay. So, remember that they satisfy this. <coughs> they are linearly independent and their Rossian is just 1 by p t. Okay. So, that also you remember. Okay. Now, y is given by that again let me not write it. So, just go back here. So, y is given by this okay, remember that thing and now we will just get this. Okay. So, differentiate so you have to be bit careful there because the the integral limits also involve t. So, you have to just bit careful there. Okay. This you already done it so, differentiate y. Okay. So, y is given by. So, let me just write it. So, a to t plus t to b. Okay recall that. Okay. So, d y by d t is 
is equal to so let me just write it uh, a to t w 1 s w 2 dot t because t is only here f of s d s and since this t is there in the limit. So, we have to also differentiate that. So, that we get. So, w 1 t w 2 t f t and if you do for the other integral similarly. So, now there is t in w 1. So, w 1 dot t w 2 s f s d s and now t is in the <coughs> lower limit. So, we get a minus here. So, w 1 t w t f t okay. and this and this cancels. Okay. So, <coughs> And now you are looking at uh, equation 3. Now you multiply by p t. So, therefore, p t d y by d t is equal to a to t. Now, just p t just goes inside there, that is all. So, there is no problem there, etcetera. And now again we differentiate this. So, d by d t of p t d y by d t and this is similar to what we did uh, in the previous step. So, just we have now a to t. So, w 1 s d by d t of p t d w 2 by d t f as it is. And now, because of the presence of t in the integral limit, so we have this p t w 1 t w 2 dot t f t. And similarly, from the other integral t to b, now it is d by d t of p t w 1 dot w 2 s f s d s and now I have a minus p t w 1 dot t w 2 t and f t. Okay. And remember w 1 w 2 they satisfy the homogeneous equation 3 and this is so simply this let me write here this is minus q t w 1 and similarly that one is minus q t w 2 t. So, and q t that nothing to do with the uh, integration variable s. Yes. So, that q t just simply comes out and what is remaining is just minus q t and if you look at the expression this is just y of t. Okay. So, the integrals are taken care of now. that portion is coming here and now about what about this one. Okay. Now, you just simplify them. So, you get p t w 1 t w dot t minus w 1 dot t w 2 t f t and this is nothing but the Ronskian. Ranskin of w 1 w 2 
and we have normalized so that the Ronskian is equal to 1 by p t and this p t p t goes away. So, you have just plus f t. Okay. So, indeed so therefore, y indeed satisfies equation 3. Okay. So, I already checked that uh, <coughs> this y has already satisfies uh, already and already seen that y equal to y b equal to 0. Okay. So, therefore, therefore, y is indeed a solution of bound value problem. Okay. So, in fact, we have just <coughs> Okay, in remaining 5 minutes, let me just uh, say what we have done. So, we have started with, okay, just let, let me recall. So, w 1, w 2 w 1, w 2 are 2 linearly independent solutions of homogeneous equation 3 with. So, we have normalized Ronskian is equal to 1 by p t. Okay. Also, so w 1 a equal to 0 and w 2 b equal to 0. Okay. So, if there are more general boundary conditions, so you have to choose w 1 w 2 appropriately and then we define this g. So, it has a name. So, this is w 1 s w 2 t if a is less than or equal to s less than or equal to t and other way around. So, g is called Green's function of the boundary value problem. Okay. So, it is very much dependent on the boundary values that is very important. So, bond, so, if you change the boundary values, uh, if you take more general thing, then the green function also changes and this g then gives us the solution of the boundary value problem. So, next time we will consider some examples of construction of this green functions and uh, you, you are seeing that we are taking the advantage of the linear system and the existence of linearly independent solutions and more generally the fundamental matrix if you are dealing with a first order linear system and that is going to help us in construction of the green function and which will eventually give solutions of our bound value problem. Thank you.